Hello, my name is Shahya Shahyari, and this is a lecture based on section 1.3 of my book, Retrolinear Algebra. Uh, this is a lecture, lecture on introductory examples of vector spaces in linear algebra. Uh, this time we will be focusing on matrices. Uh, this is a pretty short lecture, just putting us on the same page in terms of vocabulary when it comes to matrices and pointing out that matrices give us another example for vector spaces. So a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers, um, and the entries in that array are called the entries of the matrix. Uh, if the matrix has n rows and m columns, n rows and m columns, then we say that it's an n by m matrix. So for example, here is a matrix. I haven't put the actual entries as numbers, but, but uh, I have denoted them by A11, A12, A1, M, and so forth. This matrix, if you look at it, has n rows, row one, row two, row three, row n, and it has m columns, column one, column two, all the way till column m. So because of that, it's an n by m matrix. And for example, here's its second row, and here is its first column. Now, the entries, the entry in this matrix, in this particular matrix, the entry in row i column j is a sub i j. Such an entry, the entry in row i column j, is called the ij entry of this matrix. Again, these are vocabulary that um, we use for matrices. So for example, this is a matrix that's two by three. A has two rows, three columns. And um, the one three entry of this matrix, that means the entry in row one, column three, is pi. Here's another example of a matrix. This is a matrix with three rows and four columns, or five columns, sorry. So it's a three by five matrix, and the entries are all zero. When the entries are all zero, then we call that the zero matrix, um, and um, not surprisingly. If the number of rows and the number of columns is the same, um, and, and let's say that that's n, then the matrix is called the square matrix and it's a square matrix of order n. The rows and columns are the same, the number of them, and so it's a square matrix of order n. That order says the number of rows as well as the number of columns. Uh, such a matrix, among other things, will have a main diagonal. Uh, you can find its main diagonal. Those are those entries uh, that, that I've colored in blue in such a matrix. Um, and um, here's an example of such a matrix. If you take an n by n square matrix and put ones down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else, you get a matrix that's called the identity matrix of order n, and that happens to be a pretty important um, matrix as we shall see in the sequel. And, and it's denoted by i sub n. So i sub n is the identity matrix of order n, is the square matrix that has zero, is ones down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So for example, Here's the identity matrix of order four. Four rows, four columns, one's down the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. It, when we talk about matrices, whenever someone talks about the diagonal of a matrix, they mean this main diagonal, not the other diagonal. Now, those were just some words about matrices, but we're not interested in one matrix at the time. Sometimes we are, in fact, a lot of times we are, but, but when we're thinking of matrices as, I wanna think of them as vector spaces, we want to think about the world of all n by m matrices. So we're fixing n and m, and we're just focusing on, let's say, 3 by 4 matrices, or 10 by 11 matrices, or, or 47 by 256 matrices. So you pick the number of rows and columns, and then you look at all the matrices in that world. And that thing you call m sub n by m of r. The r there denotes where the entries are coming from. If they're coming from real numbers, so that's where that R does. So this consists of all, not just one, all n by n m, m mat matrices with entries in R. Uh, now, in, if you live in this world of matrices, if you live in m sub n by m um, of R, uh, then what games can you play? And, and among other things, there's other things you can do, but two things that you can do is that there is an addition and scalar multiplication. You can add two of those matrices and get another one of them, and you can always multiply by a scalar. So how does scalar multiplication work? Um, if A is a matrix and alpha is a real number, then alpha times A, um, how do I multiply 
the matrix A by the scalar alpha, uh, you, what you could do is that you get a new matrix and you get that by mu multiplying every entry of A by alpha. So the scalar gets multiplied by every entry in this scalar multiplication. Now, sometimes, um, for example, when you're doing elementary row operations, you don't want to do that. You just want to multiply one row by, by a constant. That's not um, a scalar multiplication. That's a different kind of an operation. That's an elementary row operation, for example. How do you add matrices? Well, if you have two matrices, both of them n, n by m, then you can create this new matrix called A plus B. And, and how you do that is you have to tell me what the entries of A plus B are. And the ij entry of A plus B is exactly the sum of the ij entry of A and the ij entry of B. You just add corresponding terms. So for example, if A is this, two by three matrix, which is first with, with the first row three, zero minus five, and second row zero square root of two and one half, and B is this other two by three matrix, then for example, seven A means just multiply every entry of A by seven and you get another two by three matrix. You stay within the world of two by three matrices. Um, and if you wanna add A plus B, you and again add the corresponding entries. Three plus three becomes six, zero plus seven becomes seven, minus five plus zero becomes minus five, and so forth. Matrix addition and scalar multiplication will follow exactly the same rules as addition and scalar multiplication in Rn and uh, Pr. Pr was polynomials, Rn was n tuples, and we had uh, the, their addition and scalar multiplication followed certain rules. The addition was commutative, it was associative, there was a zero, uh, there was negatives, and then uh, scalar multiplication distributed over addition, uh, one times something was itself, and alpha beta times something was alpha times beta, that's something. That's those same rules work here. The, what's the zero matrix? Well, it's the matrix of all zeros. And uh, what's the negative of a matrix? Well, you just multiply everything by by negative, by a negative sign. And then you get, you get a matrix that if you add to the original matrix, you get the zero vector. That's how you know the zero matrix. Um, I did mention at some point in, in a previous lecture that whenever you have a vector space, all the elements in it are called vectors. So when you think of matrices as, uh, as a vector space, then it's elements, meaning the elements of that vector space, meaning the matrices can be called vectors. So, uh, the, to, to summarize, MN, uh, M, N by M, R is, is another example of a vector space. The set of all N by M matrices with real entries is also another example of a vector space. And that's the business we're in, finding examples of where we have a set and two operations, addition and scalar multiplication. We're finding all these examples so that if we can then prove something about vector spaces, it will apply to all of our examples, but also as motivation to look into vector spaces if we see that um, the, the, there is mild, there's, there's things to be, to be learned because there's a lot of examples of vector spaces. Um, uh, to, I'll finish this uh, uh, short lecture by some additional uh, matrix notation and vocabulary. So if you have an n by one matrix, that means n rows and one column. So this sort of tall matrix, that's called a column vector. Likewise, if you have a one by n matrix, one row but n columns, that's called a row vector. Um, if you have an n by n matrix, you can find another matrix called the transpose of A, and that's denoted by H, A, uh, T. Some, some people have other notations, A prime and other kinds, but I write A, A T, T for transpose. And that A transpose in another matrix is not n by m, it's m by n, so the number of rows and columns switch because the first column of this new matrix is uh, the first row of the old matrix. The second row, uh, the second column of the, um, this is a typo, the second column um, of the um, A transpose is the second row of A. That should not be second column of A, it should be second row of A, and so forth. So, uh, so what you do is that you take rows of A and turn them into columns. Uh, first row becomes second column, second row becomes second column, and, and so forth. Um, 
Also, if A is n by n matrix, then we can talk about the trace of A. This is a, for square matrices only, when the number of rows and columns is the same. And the trace of A is the sum of uh, the diagonal entries um, in the main diagonal. So you just add them up and you get a number and that's called the trace. So for example, this is a um, one row, four columns. So one by four row vector. And if you transpose it, you get a column vector and you get a four by one column vector. You switch the rows into columns. Uh, this is a two by three um, matrix. And if you transpose it, you get a three by two. And again, the first row becomes the first column. The second row becomes the second column. And um, here's a square matrix, a three by three square matrix. None of the previous ones were square matrices. This one is square matrix. And because of that, I can find the trace. And for trace, you just ignore everything other than what's on the diagonal. And you get, in this case, you get two plus square root of two. Um, one final definition. If you have a uh, matrix with real entries, it's called symmetric if when you transpose it, you get itself, nothing happens. And uh, first of all, for a matrix to be symmetric, it has to be square because if it's not square and you transpose it, it already doesn't look like itself. But uh, and it doesn't really matter what's it on its main diagonal because those entries end up to being exactly where they used to be. But, but off the diagonal, they say one, two entry will have to be the same as the two, one entry so that when you transpose it, it doesn't change and so forth. Such a matrix is called symmetric. These were just some vocabulary about matrices. The main point of this lecture was that the set of two by eight matrices forms a vector space as does the set of all 47 by five matrices. That's the end. And here's a picture for you. I will continue the set of lectures uh, with the next one, which will be about functions.